19-0829 FC, Van Burkle versus Van Burkle. Each side will have 20 minutes uh, to present your uh, uh, argument. You'll have to manage your own time. You have a clock. On, can, can you see the clock on the screen? It will count down. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Van Burkle, if, if you want to take time for rebuttal, you'll have to keep track of, of your own time on that. We're, we're recording the argument. Yes, so, I, think, I think he's the athlete. Oh, I, 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 I apologize, Ms. Van Burkle. Since you're the appellant, you, you, have to, to, you have the opportunity for a rebuttal, but you can use as much of your 20 minutes as you wish for rebuttal, but you'll have to, you'll have to um, work your own time. We are recording the, the argument. Uh, Please identify yourself. So that when we review review the the audio, we we can keep everybody straight. We've read the briefs and uh, covered the case. We understand the facts and issues. And uh, so, so when you begin your, your your argument, just tell us what you like for us to know. And means uh, Ms. Van you can begin. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. My name is Kimberly Eckert, and I represent appellant Tamara Van Burkle, who I also may refer to as mother during this argument, as well as I may refer to Mr. Van Burkle, the appellee, as father during this argument. We come to the court appealing the trial court's order concerning father's petition to modify legal decision-making, parenting time, and child support, which was denied as to the legal decision-making, but granted as to the parenting time and child support. This appeal is requested based on abuse of discretion by the trial court when it took away mother's parenting time without findings required by the statutes that grant parents frequent and meaningful contact with their child unless exceptions occur, which were not found here. Prior to father's petition to modify, the orders were equal parenting time. As a factual background, the teenage son began rebelling against mom's rules, and in time, mom's parenting time dwindled to little or no time with her son. The courts in its orders referred to it as an alleged strain on the teenage son's relationship with the mother. Now, the findings in the trial court's order discusses the deterioration of mother's relationship with her teenage son. Throughout the order, at least three different times, the court states that both parents have been responsible for the alienation of mother. However, the order directs therapy that the teenage son and also mother must accomplish in order to have parenting time. Despite the order stating that both parents have engaged in behavior encouraging the son's estrangement from the mother, the order lays absolutely no responsibility on father. The problem with the order is that no time frames were given for increased parenting time for mom. Further, many contingencies which actually occurred after the orders were in place were not accounted for. Now, in the in the trial court, you say um, there's no there's no time frames. Don't they don't they suggest that as the therapist recommends that uh, the time can be increased? That is true, but that, there's nothing that, concrete. That, but doesn't isn't that the nature of trying to rebuild a relationship, it's it's hard to put an exact timeline. Why, why doesn't that make sense in this context? You're, you're not disputing that there's a strained relationship um, and the court's recognizing the strained relationship and saying to the extent the relationship can be improved through therapy, we can, uh, we, we can look into changing parenting time at that point. Well, the court has nothing concrete for mom to return to, to any type of schedule of parenting time. That's the problem with the orders. What, what would you suggest, though, if there's a if there's a completely fractured relationship, would it be appropriate for the court to say, well, within uh, 60 days, we're going to change this? Doesn't doesn't it make sense to say, come and show us that there's a 
um, go go to therapy. Have if there's if there's a change, let us know, and uh, and we'll change parenting time. Why, why doesn't that make sense? Well, we see in the trial court arena, um, courts carve out carve out all different times of parenting plans. But in this one, mom basically had nothing. Um, the therapy did not occur, occur, and the court's orders did not account for that. So basically, mom is still if, at if parenting time. If the therapy time. didn't occur, isn't that something that you can file a petition to modify or petition for contempt? I mean, the idea that because there were contingencies, you say contingencies not accounted for, but what you're saying is that one party didn't pull the weight of the order or didn't do as ordered. Isn't that a petition for contempt? I mean, why is that a remedy that you seek in the underlying order itself? Well, that's possible, Your Honor. Um, it is interesting to note that we did ask for clarification of the trial court because of the vagueness of these orders when we first received them. But um, that was denied because father had already filed for an appeal. Um, that appeal that he filed, he never followed through with it. And this was intended to be a cross appeal. However, it turned into our actual um, appeal when father did not follow through. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, we see courts carve out specific things all the time. And basically this, this does not account for mom having any parenting time in the future. And um, we believe that the orders are deficient because of that. So the court basically adopted um, the court advisor holly judge's recommendation we look yeah. in her report the cancel I, I question i have about all this <laughs> is that the trial court uh, uh, the, the, the trial judge was there he saw you your yeah uh, your client who the the uh the arguments on on the appeal or review is abuse of, of, of discretion. I mean, how how can we uh, 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 examine a lot of these issues when when it's usually better left to the trial court? Well, that's what we're asking for, Your Honor, is to be remanded to the trial court so that the trial can, court can put some more specific orders in place and perhaps learn about what has happened since these orders and how mom has no parenting time at all. So that's what we are asking this court to do is to remand for more specific orders. Why would actions that have been taken after the order was in place be relevant if we were to remand? I mean, you're asking, you're asking again for some sort of post order disposition that you would have to present additional facts on. Well, and, and does the appeal preclude you from filing for contempt? I mean, the appeal is for the underlying order, but if you filed for mm -hmm. contempt of the parenting time orders or some sort of uh, new, if there were new circumstances that under the children's best interest standard allowed you to go back into court, it doesn't preclude you from doing that, even though well, this appeal is pending. But perhaps it does because there's nothing really to hang on to with these orders being so vague that we can even really show that there is contempt happening. Um, well, what are you saying are the changed circumstances? What has happened since the order? If there are, isn't there, a, yeah. if well, there's not it, a change in circumstance, what would you be arguing? Well, in the record, you will see that we did ask for. Um, uh, it was ordered that a reunification therapist uh, happen and see mom and also see the teenage son together with mom. Well, when mom went to the recommended uh, inter interventional therapist, uh, excuse me, she wasn't an interventional therapist. She was a reunification therapist, asked that therapist if she would assist. And that therapist said, no, not unless I'm I'm appointed the inter interventional therapist for this case where I can have accountability for dad, for son, for this therapy. And we went to the trial court and we asked that Heidi Quinlan be assigned as an interventional therapist and we were denied that. Well, I, I my question wasn't very good. If there are that if it's if it's a changed circumstance, why isn't that a new petition compared to an appeal from this order, which on its face, if the order makes sense saying uh let's do this counseling and if that had worked out everything would be fine but if, if you have some new circumstances 
that seems different than challenging the underlying order. And why mm -hmm. isn't that just a new petition? Well, maybe that will be something that will happen. But at the time of this appeal, there wasn't the change of circumstances. So we didn't. Yeah. Why, why could we consider that now then? Why, if, if the order on its face looks looks reasonable, why, why are we going to consider change circumstances now if we're just reviewing the court's order for an abuse of discretion? Well, I think my point is that there's contingencies and um, potential things that the court should have seen with this order that could go wrong. Uh, maybe what's happened since then isn't really relevant and shouldn't be argued right now, but we could say, look, there was no contingencies in place and those things actually did happen and mom has no parenting time because of this order. What kind of contingencies? I guess I'm just confused. I don't, you know, obviously okay. the order can't anticipate every potential move that both parents will make or not make. And that's why they have uh, avenues for you to go back to court for contempt or for modification. So what what is what is this avenue? What's happened that is so troubling in preventing mom from I, I'm missing. Okay. Something. Sure. Thanks, Your Honor. That's a that's a fair question. And I and I understand what you're asking. Um, for example, the court did not account for contingencies such as what if the teenage son did not actively participate in the therapy he was ordered to do and he's getting nowhere and it's pointless to continue. And the therapist pulled out and said, son isn't participating, so there's no sense in doing that. What if but, 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 but cancel on those things that the trial judge at the time can't know? And now those things have either happened or they have not happened. And that may give you an opportunity to go back to the trial judge to say these things happened or didn't happen. So please change your order. That's appropriately addressed to the trial judge, not, not to us. And it's just how it appears to me. Well, I think one of the points here, too, is that the findings that the court made in, in 11 pages of findings did not support these orders. And that's also an abuse of discretion that um, it isn't. Why, why would the finding that there's a fractured relationship and counseling um, and, and we're going to order counseling? Are you saying the, the record doesn't support those facts that are the fact that there's a fractured relationship? No, what I, I'm saying is that the factors is that previously mom had equal parenting time and um, the orders are fi finding not her at fault. So she's not doing anything wrong. That no would matter who's at fault. If, there, if there's a fractured relationship where we're presumably the court's not going to say uh, we're going to force the, the child to, to go stay there, notwithstanding the fractured relationship. Doesn't the court have to take take things as they are and try to craft a remedy? Yes, but the court could have ordered um, 60 days of counseling. And then after 60 days, mom gets some sort of parenting time back. Here, it's so vague that she doesn't have any chance to get her parenting time back. But, but you would order parenting time if there's no change in the relationship, if, there, if it remains a fractured relationship? Well, how can she, how can she reunite and have any reunification with her son if she never sees him and she never has any parenting time, that's virtually impossible to repair a relationship without actual parenting time. And we, our position is that the orders don't account for that. So, but, 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 but at the time of the order, the judge was hoping that the counseling would help repair the relationship. The judge didn't know at that point whether it would work or not work. And there, there was an evidence, I'm assuming, uh, that they said, we are absolutely not going to participate in in counseling. Um, if, if there's evidence to that effect, then it, it seems like you've, you've got more of an argument relating to the, the order, as yeah. opposed to the circumstances have now changed, and this is why we need to now go in and explain why we need to do something different. Uh, but well, can you point something at the time the court issued its ruling where there was absolutely no chance that anyone was going to agree to go to counseling, or I mean, in particular, the son is is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that there was. I mean, we can go back and look at Holly Judge's reports and she did interview the son. But I think important to know is that in the orders, the court said that 
repairing the relationship would be difficult without the support of the father. And father had some responsibility here, yet in the actual orders, father had none. And if son, you know, said, I don't want to go, and all along dad was saying, well, I'm not going to force son to do it if he doesn't want to, then that's the problem. And that evidence was presented to the trial court during the hearing. Um, you're, you're saying that there was evidence that there that he specifically said, I'm going to discourage son from doing this, and son said, I'm not going to participate. No, Mr. there was no evidence of that. Mr. Van Berkel. I understand that you disagree, but if you could keep your head nodding, you, we'll give you a chance to respond, but I'm finding a little distracting when I'm trying to watch what's going on over here. It's just the it's just the way of the everybody being on on one place. Um, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Sorry. I'm not sure if I answered the question, I hope I did. Um, I, I mean, I agree with you, Your Honor, that there is nothing that said that, but there was a history of there was a history of problems between son and mom and you know father admitted at trial that he had done nothing in seven months to encourage son to uh, reunify with mom at whatsoever so i think if you look at that then the court should have thought you know there's some history here and maybe even though i'm ordering this counseling it will never happen so that's what we're asking to be re remanded to go back to the court to take a look at um, I know I only have a few minutes, so I do want to um, just touch on the other part of my um, my appeal, which is on the child support. Um, the child support calculation that the court used did not do two things. One, mom should have been given credit for parenting time or parenting time in the future that was supposed to happen, and she was not. Um, the, the child support orders did not anticipate an increase in mom's time whatsoever. And number two, it also did not account for dad's actual income as a chiropractor in the business for 25 years. On, on, on number one, you're not saying the the time, the parenting time has increased. You're just saying that you wanted it to anticipate, but, but that in fact has not happened. Is that right? And yeah. isn't that again something that, that you true. could raise if, if additional parenting time works out, um, you could go in and and say, we, I now have more parenting time, the child support order should be modified. Yes, and maybe that would happen, but for the purposes of this appeal, um, we are looking at the orders themselves and we're looking at mom and dad had equal parenting time with no child support being ordered. And now um, mom's being given credit for no time, which apparently the court kind of, I guess, tried to anticipate her having some time in the future, but yet, didn't give her credit for that on the child support worksheet. Um, also important to note, there is a teenage daughter as well, and um, she has the teenage daughter half the time. And so we want to go back and have the trial court recalculate that support order. And along with the fact that- What, what, that facts would you, what, what, what level of support should be ordered if no time is being spent currently by son? With mother, she, she gets a she gets a credit on the calculation of the child support worksheet if she's caring for another child, even part time. It takes away right. some of her income. But did you raise that in a motion to reconsider with the court that they had incorrectly filled out the child support worksheet without adding that daughter to the worksheet? Well, I don't know that they didn't add the daughter. I think the court did reference Mitt, the Mitten case where. Um, you take the children and the time and then you divide it by two. I, I, I that I'm not sure that oh, okay. was, was not included, but your honor, we did file for a motion for reconsideration. And, and as I mentioned, that was immediately denied since an appeal had already been um, been filed by dad. But wasn't the, the motion to reconsideration was premised on the notion that more parenting time should be ordered and when there should be a schedule for parenting time and Parenting time, the number should be different. Is that is that accurate? Probably. I, I, I would need to go back and look at the actual motion, Your Honor. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I believe that's probably accurate. The other thing about the child support um, order, um, at the end of the trial, father's tax returns were submitted. He had $156,000 in receipts, but claimed he had $108,000 in expenses, which is basically two-thirds of his income any um, support for that claim. Um, he, um, 
refused to admit what an average chiropractor would have, would make. And he admitted to only working 30 hours and basically claimed his income was a third of his receipts. Um, so we are asking for a remand on that as well. And I see I am basically out of time. Remind me what he attributed his income as. 68, 60, I believe it was 68,000. So she didn't say it was just a third of his income of the 156. No, but he claimed his expenses were a third of his receipts. Cancel. Since you announced about uh, the two minute mark that you wanted for time for rebuttal, we'll, we'll give you a couple of minutes on, on re re rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. M Mr. Van Burkle. Um, um, Mr. Van Burkle, we're having a hard time hearing you. If you could turn your volume up as, as high as, as you can. Okay, um, I'm not 100% sure how to do that. Um, please let me know if I'm not coming through clearly. Sure, thank you. I do not see a volume control on my speaker, on my uh, microphone. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes um, prefacing how we ended up in this situation. Um, uh, our son is uh, currently 17 and a half years old. Um, at the time when his relationship with his mother became strained, um, he was approximately 16 years old. Uh, and I, I think it might uh, require hours of conversation to go into the details about the strain in their relationship. Um, however, um, as of uh, November 2nd, 2018, uh, so that's approximately two years ago, um, his mother kicked him out of the house and he came and moved in with me full time instead of 50-50. Uh, um, that was November of 2018. Uh, November went by. December went by, January went by, and February went by without any contact from mother. Not a text, not an email, not a phone call, a passport, a return to her parents' time. Zero request to go back to it. So on, as of March 2019, I wrote her an email that said, I'm going to follow your recommendations. She had emailed me to go to court and file for a change in the parenting time. That was in an email. She told me to go to court. I waited four months to see if there was a change in mind. I went to court to file for a modification in my parenting time, um, a modification in the legal decision making as well, which I was denied. Um, uh, and so um, I, I went to court. And we had several, several meetings and hearings with the court. Um, and essentially, the orders that came out were that uh, they were not, the court was not going to force our son to go back to mother, and he was to live with the adult, as he had for a period of time already. Um, the, the court ordered a uh, court appointed advisor uh, for us to visit with and for her to interview. And, area um, to interview us and both children and then the court set a trial date for September 10th 2019. Um, we were all interviewed and by all I mean myself my ex-wife and both of our children by Holly Judge who was a court appointed advisor and uh, she came out with a 19 page report um, and she as well testified as an expert during our trial in September. Um, several important recommendations by Holly Judge came out, and to me, those important recommendations that came out were that Jacob should start individual counseling, um, that Jacob and mother should start reunification counseling, and she also said that no forced parenting time with mother, as that would likely backfire. Mr. R R Mr. Van Burkle, at the time the judge issued those orders, was there any indication that counseling 
absolutely working out for us? Um, no, because we had never been in this situation. Um, I told the court I was open to any kind of counseling. Um, mother is a counselor, so I'm sure she would not be opposed to this. And uh, Jacob did not have a say in that. So um, when the judge, when we had our trial um, on September 10th, 2019, uh, the judge um, deliberated on this for about six weeks, and then she her uh, uh, under advisement ruling about six weeks later, and that under advisement ruling is also quite lengthy. It, it goes on for 15 or 16 pages, and um, she followed many of the recommendations that were put in place by Holly Judge, who was appointed to advisor. And essentially what came out of it is that um, Jacob shall live with father, and as he had for about a year already at that time. Um, mother shall exercise parenting time after the initiation of and reunification counseling. The judge ordered therapy for Jacob, individual therapy. Um, mother and myself agreed on a counselor. Um, who is a um, adolescent childhood counselor? That's his experience. Um, it fell on me mostly to set up these appointments because Jacob was living under my roof at the time. So I followed the orders given. Um, there we were given very specific timelines when counseling should start and commence. Um, and he went to approximately six different sessions over a period of a month and a half to two months. At that time, I asked his counselor through email, and mother was copied on these questions. Um, I asked Michael Kunter, basically, how are things going after about six sessions? And he wrote back to us both in an email, uh, and I quote his, his, some of his um, conversation to us in the email. Uh, he said, at this point, Jacob has no interest in the reunification. Um, Jacob is a pleasant young man who is high achieving in many areas of life and, quote, he is not motivated at this time to develop a relationship with his mother. He repeatedly states that he's no longer affected by the issues with his mother that led him to decide he does not want to return to living with her. He also states that he is not wanting to visit her at this time. Jacob is currently not motivated to explore the thoughts or emotions. Are, are these, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but are, are these, uh, these emails or these, um, these statements are made after the court's order? Yes. Yes, oh. because he was ordered to see this counselor after the orders. Right. And our, our primary for focus here is on just the reasonableness of the order. So I'm, we're primarily interested in what happened before, but that's, it's, I appreciate the information after, but if, is there anything else from before the order that that would suggest that people were not willing to participate in counseling? Um, it sounds like the counseling did, in fact, happen after the order. Correct. No, individual, individual counseling was started, and then um, after Mr. Kuntner, his individual counselor, um, wrote a little summary to us. Um, mother advised me by email that he should discontinue his individual that it was by her suggestion that I asked what should we do moving forward she said discontinue the reunification counseling that was ordered and this order was placed directly on mother to follow through because it was between mother and son it never started it was ordered to commence there was an order in place for when the contact should be made with the counselor <laughs> But Mr. Van but at the time of the order, it was no indication that that, that counseling would not work or would not occur. No, no, the, the order was put into place um, in uh, as a pathway or hopes to reunify mother and son. Uh, I think that was the consideration made. Um, and the reunification counseling essentially the burden of that to start it not to pay for it but to start it was put on mother and it was never started it, it, it still to date has not been started um and i thought that was a clear pathway that was laid out for mother to um, try 
try to reunify and mend the relationship. Um, and um, please, please stop me if I'm if incorrect. Um, in addition, I think Mother um, could have taken an effort to reunify the facility uh, because that's what this is about her parenting time. But since the order was put in place, she, he was not invited for Christmas. He was not invited for Mother's birthday. He was not invited for Mother's Day to Mother. Um, he is a um, club and high school soccer player, and I never once saw Mom at any of his games to show support. But none, but none of this was before the, the trial judge at the time of the order, though, correct? This was after after the okay. orders were put in place. Right. Okay. And I'm referring yeah. to efforts that Mother could make to reduce well, but efforts, in my opinion, as far as I'm um, trying to reintroduce herself because I've always told our son, Jacob, if you want to talk to your mom, if you want to see your mom, please feel free to do that. He tried. He's 17 and a half. He has full freedom to, to move around and go see his mom or communicate with his mom through text or phone. And I have encouraged him continually that if he would like to see his mom, if he would like to speak with his mom or meet with his mom, he is more than welcome to do that. But, but just to reiterate with you, at the time of the order, there was no indication that the the things that the judge ordered would not occur. Everyone agreed to try these things. You know, Jacob has lived with me for about two years now, uh, times in a bit. Um, and, um, you know, um, raising, a, raising a teenager is not the easiest task to uh, place upon him. Um, I'm happy to take it on. Um, I, I've raised both children in the past full time for several years uh, since the time of our divorce finally. I, I'm happy to take it on. But I also, at the same time, will always encourage son to try to reunify with his mom, but ultimately that falls on Jacob and that falls on mother to make those efforts. And in my, it is merely my opinion that mother has not made considerable efforts to try to reunify in the form of um, birthday, um, um, holidays, Mother's Day, or to show support for her son by showing up in his game. Um, I, I want to move on to the second part of this um, appeal, which is child support. And um, it is my opinion that the lower court did the Arizona child support guidelines correctly. Um, it is it is true that um, the court raised um, my my allocation on the child support um, count um, child support later to a $68,000 per year income from a lower amount because I did state that I work as a C patient of a chiropractor about 32 hours a week. But um, unfortunately for me, and I'm fine with it, um, I see the patients 32 hours a week, but there's a lot more involved in running a business, marketing, um, accounting, um, personnel management. And I did not take that into account when I said I work 32 hours a week. There are many nights when I go home and I sit at my laptop entering patients' notes. I don't count that as time that I see patients. So um, my, my ex-wife's attorney likes to make comments about my lavish lifestyle. And uh, I just want to paint a clearer picture of my lavish lifestyle. Um, I am engaged. My fiance and I uh, bought a house earlier this year for $425,000. Uh, we have a traditional 30-year mortgage on which my responsibility is approximately $1,000 a month. That is my mortgage responsibility. I drive a vehicle that's from 2007 with 206,000 miles on it. I don't believe that's lavish. She states that I bought my son a brand new vehicle, a brand new BMW. That's not the case either. My deal with both my children is you make money, whatever you have saved up at the time you get your driver's license, I match. Jacob saved up $3,000, I match $3,000. Um, 
My dad came in last minute and said, I'll pitch in more money for me too. And we bought a car for $10,000. So he's not driving, he did not buy my son. I don't have the ability or the desire to buy my son a new vehicle. He drives a 2012 BMW that's cost $10,000. I'm here representing myself because I feel that this has been going on since 2007. And for me to pay money to an attorney to represent me is a complete um, irresponsibility, fiscal irresponsibility for myself. We have a senior and a sophomore in high school who will be going to college, and that money needs to be spent on college applications, college credits, and trying to get our kids through the next stage in their life. I live very much within the means of my income. Um, our, our son is currently 17 and a half years old. He's a straight A student, has honored classes and AP classes and his college credits are there. He plays both club soccer and high school soccer and is the goalie for both of those teams. He works full time during his breaks. When COVID hit, he used to work full time, 40 to 50 hours a week. He works part time during school. He has very high ambitions. He wants to become a surgeon. Um, and he is not a, he has no, no history, criminal history. The boy stays home and plays video games and plays soccer and gets together with a few friends. He's not a troubled child, in my opinion. Very ambitious, highly motivated, straight A student. I believe that the lower court had all the information in front of them. They had expert witness testimony by the judge. Um, and I think the, the results of the orders um, have been consistent with all of the best interests for Jake and consistent with the recommendations to the court. I myself did not like all of the orders either. I sought to uh, get sole legal decision making and I did not go with that. Um, I sought to get child support made retroactive for my time of filing for um, the modification. And the judge um, granted me child support from the date of the orders. So I was not happy with all of the orders, but there is compromise. And I followed the order to a T to this point. Um, I believe that some of the orders were ignored by mother. The order to start reunification counseling was not started. Um, I believe that um, if you're ordered to start reunification counseling for the best interest of finding a pathway to see your son again and be with your son, why not start that? Um, I believe that when there's a common sense involved to invite your son to Christmas, your birthday, or Mother's Day, or attend a sporting event, that is common sense. Why would that not follow? At some point, I believe you have to take your personal responsibility for your actions or for your inactions. And I believe at some point you need to stop hiding, uh, unfortunately, hiding behind your attorney or blaming the court for why she's not seeing your son. I, I do not believe in that. I believe the lower court fairly and correctly made the orders. I think they should be upheld. And in my opinion, this appeal and to spend the, the valuable, precious time of the, the appeals court is, is frivolous in my opinion. Um, these are just my opinions, and, and feel free to ask me any questions you may have. Thank you, counsel. <laughs> Mr. Van Burkle, we appreciate your your uh, argument. And we've we've given you two minutes for rebuttal. Um, thank you. Um, there are no new circumstances. Oh, I, oh, I, 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 I apologize. I thought, I thought you had uh, concluded. If you need them, please continue. Uh, if I can, uh, there are no new circumstances that have come about since the orders. Um, uh, time frames were clearly given for mother to follow to start reunification. Um, there is no business support in this matter um, as far as the orders on my end um, that were given uh, by the judge. Um, 
And the mother had actually full parenting time, but she abandoned her own parenting time on multiple occasions. So um, when, when you abandon your parenting time and you do not ask for it to come back, and you can tell me to go to court, and I wait two, four months to go to court, Thank you, Mr. Van Burkle. We uh, appreciate your argument. Ms. Eckert? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Well, first of all, the record itself contradicts father's claims of encouragement. The court did not find that. In fact, on page five of the court's order, um, the court said that father engaged in behavior designed to alienate mother and son. So, you know, whether the court believed that counseling would work or not, um, there was nothing else ordered. There was no, it was all contingent on the counseling. Um, there was nothing ordered that was specifically give mom parenting time. And, and really the most important thing is that the previous orders were equal parenting time. Mother was not found to be a danger to the child endanger his mental, emotional, moral, or mental health as the case law and the statute. Yes, she basically had her parenting time taken away by these orders. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hecker. Thank you, Mr. Van Burkle. We'll take this matter under advisement and we'll issue a decision in due course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.